there, I'm Jonathan Strickland, the senior writer here at HowStuffWorks.com, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the future of user interfaces. Now, user interface is really the way that we interact with the electronics and computers around us. It can range from desktop computers to a smartphone or an MP3 player, pretty much anything in between. The user interface has evolved quite a bit from the original keyboard only model. We then went to keyboard mouse and really desktops and laptops have mostly stayed in that realm since then. Although we're starting to see some touchscreen interfaces get integrated into both laptops and desktops at this point. In the mobile space, which is where a lot of development is going on right now, we're seeing more evolution. So the touch screen is almost universal at this point, and multi-touch is very common. I would still call this an emerging technology because we haven't leveraged it to its fullest extent. We're playing around with things, but we're still learning how the human brain interacts with these devices. In fact, user interface design is just as much about psychology as it is about technology. Beyond the touchscreen user interface, we're also seeing other emerging technologies like voice interaction. You're seeing this with things like Google Voice as well as Apple, Apple iPhone 4S Siri. Now, Siri is a user interface that uses voice recognition and some semantic search to try and generate a truly immersive experience so that you can ask your phone what you want and it'll come back with the correct answer or at least a web search that will point you in the right direction. These are still baby steps. In the future, we're probably going to see even more robust voice recognition services that will allow us to speak fluently into our phones with natural language and have it return results almost as if it were another person standing next to us. Now, I don't think we're going to see this roll over into the desktop and laptop spaces that much because imagine going to your job, sitting down at a desk, logging into your computer, and then trying to interact with your computer while everyone around you is chatting away on to their computers. It would be very distracting. So I don't think voice recognition is really going to roll out broadly across desktops and laptops unless we figure out some way to teach computers how to lip read. But beyond voice recognition, we have gesture control, and gesture control is starting to emerge as well through things like touch pads and touch screens. Eventually we may have some gesture control gloves that we wear, sort of a minority report kind of approach where we start gesturing in the air and the computer responds to the way we move things. This might seem kind of science fiction-y, but really it could become a very useful tool. Imagine having a three-dimensional virtual model of a gadget that you've built, like a car or a computer, and you want to be able to get a good look at it from any angle, and you just hold your hands up and turn it the way you want it to turn in order to get a better view, or even to explode the view so you can get a look at the components inside. It would be a very natural way of doing that. And as we've seen with products like the iPad and the iPhone and iPod Touch, as well as other touchscreen devices, kids really get a grasp on this interface very early on, much earlier than they would with a mouse and keyboard. So with that sort of innate ability to understand how to manipulate virtual objects using this kind of user interface, I think we're gonna see a lot more development there as well. But what goes beyond that? Well, Next would be a brain-computer interface. Now this is where we would have some sort of interface that would allow us to express thoughts and see those reflected as actions with a computer or an electronic gadget. So you might think to call a friend of yours and your phone will start calling them. Or you might think, I'm hungry, and your phone responds with telling you where the nearest places to eat might be. Or it may not even be a phone. It may be a special pair of glasses you wear that responds to your thoughts. Now, this is going to take a lot of work because the processing power behind it would be enormous, as well as the the process of learning to think properly and having the machine learn how you think. It would be a double learning process. We would have to learn how to think the right way to make the computers do what we want them to do. The computers would have to learn how we think to respond appropriately. And this is a pretty involved process and it's going to be different from one individual to the next. So it's not gonna be something we're gonna see universally applied anytime soon. But what, I hear you ask, is beyond that, I'll tell you, artificial intelligence. This is the point where our machines are as smart as us, perhaps even more smart, and they can anticipate what we want before we even know we want it. And in fact, at this point, the interface is taken out of our hands entirely, and the computers tell us what to do and where to go, and... I'm sorry. 
I'm being told my time is up. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts, free, on iTunes.